So we talked last week about ratios, rate, scientific notation, variables, powers, all that good stuff. So this week, we're going to kind of move into the next step, the final portion of Unit 2, which of course means that next Friday is Unit 2 test. Um, dealing with unit conversions. Now to, to deal with that, I want to review a little bit with fractions here first. And when we have fractions, if, let's say we have 6 sevenths times 14 fifteenths. When we go to multiply fractions, we can cross cancel or reduce before we multiply. I can look at this and say, hey, 7 and 14 can both be divided by 7. Give me 1 and 2. 6 and 15 can both be divided by 3 to give me 2 and 5. And then I can multiply. 2 times 2 is 4. 1 times 5 is 5. Well, the same thing can be done with variables and units. We looked at some dimensional analysis in the last unit. And some of the examples the book used got a little bit ridiculous. But basically what it was is if you're taking um, milliliters per minute and you have a fluid that is listed given a density in milligrams per milliliter, if you multiply those together, you can cross-cancel the milliliters and you're left with milligrams per minute. Does that make sense? So even if we throw numbers with that, when we're doing calculations with measurement, um, one that we're very familiar with is miles per hour. So let's say you are driving and you are doing 50 miles per hour. We mentioned last week that when we see, you know, I could just have MPH or whatever, so when we see a rate like that, that we have to be thinking that this is really 50 miles over one hour. Because we need it in that form in order to calculate with it. So if I want to know how far I will drive in six hours, how do I know whether I'm multiplying, dividing, whatever? Well, I can use the units. I have 50 miles per hour, for one hour. Now I'm asking for how far, so I want my answer, of course, to be in miles. So to get from miles per hour to miles, all I really need to do is get rid of the hours down here. Well, I can do that by multiplying by something that has hours in it. We're going for six hours. I'm going to multiply by six hours, which I can put over one if I want to make it a fraction. So now, if I'm when I multiply this, the hours will cross cancel, and I'm left with 50 miles times six, or 300 miles over one times one is one. So it's just 300 miles. Most of you knew that if you have miles per hour, and you want to know how far you've gone, you just multiply by the number of hours. But a little bit different way of looking at it. Let's say that I'm going 50 miles per hour again. And I want to know how long it'll take to travel 400 miles. So I'm asking for how long. I have 400 miles. I'm asking for how long, so I want my answer to be in hours. So I need to get my miles changed into hours to make that conversion. I'm going to make that a fraction. Now I need something with miles down here so that the miles will cross cancel and hours up here. Does that make sense? Well, I have 50 miles per one hour, I'll put 50 in miles in one hour. What I've done is I've flipped it over. 
what I'm doing is I am dividing by 50 miles per one hour. And if I divide by a fraction, I flip it over and I multiply. So the miles do cross cancel. I have 400 times one hour is 400 hours. Over 1 times 50 is 50. 400 divided by 50 is 8 hours. Again, most of us already know that if you have miles per hour and you want to know how long it's going to take to go a certain distance, you divide the distance by your miles per hour, which is exactly what I did here. But this is just a little bit of a, a way of displaying how our units work. When we're dealing with fractions, not only can the numbers cross cancel, but so can the units. And that is the heart behind the measurement conversions we're going to be talking about today. So in order to make some of our measurement conversions, first we need to get familiar with some of our measurements. So let's talk a little bit about measurement. Um, first of all, the origins of measurement came from a need to communicate. If we're looking at, there we have Ashland coming up finally. Um, if we're looking at, um, let's say two of us are trying to build the same thing and we need to be, want it to be identical. If we're in the same room working together, you can just walk over and look at it and mark it off of what I'm doing or the other way around. But let's say you're down the hall or down the street or whatever. I need some way to, to send to you the dimensions that I have so that you can see how big it is. So I might take a piece and then mark it or cut it to that length and have someone take it to you or a piece of string or something like that. But that can be kind of tedious and if there's a lot of dimensions to send to you that can be very cumbersome. So it'd be nice to be able to write it down on paper. And that started by just taking objects and comparing it to what we were measuring. And there goes enrichment again. Hopefully they come back up. Um, so let's say I wanted to measure this sheet of paper. Well I might take my pen here and go, okay, there's one, two, two and a half pens long. So if you're making something the size of this sheet of paper, I say it's two and a half pens. There's a problem with that. I'm making two big assumptions. One is I'm making the assumption that you have a pen. And two, I'm making the assumption that your pen is the same size as mine. If you have this pen, obviously you go two and a half pens, we're not going to be going the same size. They're very, very different. So they used things that were, that pretty much everybody had and were approximately the same size. For example, if we're talking length measurement, what's our smallest unit of length we use in our standard measuring? The inch, right? Anybody know where the inch came from? The inch is actually from the tip of a man's thumb to the point of the knuckle. Pretty much everybody has at least one thumb and they're approximately the same size. Um, you may have different length fingers, but for the most part, the thumb from one person to another is close to the same size. Um, other things in, in length, like foot, hands were used. Um, the cubit was from the point of the middle finger to the point of the elbow. Um, all sorts of things were used for dimensions. Well, in the medical fields, lengths are not quite that important, but Still, it was body parts. Cups were literally how much powder you could hold in your cupped hand. That's what a cup came from. So anyway, let's take a look at some of those units. We're going to start out looking at standard units. These used to be called the English standard units, but somewhere back in the late 80s, England, the United Kingdom, switched over to the metric system, which leaves the United States as officially the only, uh, only industrialized country in the world that is not on the metric system. Uh, brings up the whole argument of are we going to switch? Well, the answer is yeah, but when, who knows? Um, somewhere around 30 years ago now, oh, that's sad to think, uh, when I was in middle school, I had a middle school science teacher that was preaching to us, within 10 years the United States is going to be switching to the met metric system. Well, that was a little more than 10 years ago. And I'm pretty sure some of you that are younger probably heard something similar to that, that we're going to be switching soon. The switch will, the change will take place. It's just how soon, who knows. Um, like right now, you can't go out and buy a quart of, of liquor. 
or you can't buy a pound of tobacco or a pound of gunpowder. Um, everything that is regulated by the ATF, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, is required in the United States to be bought and sold in metric units. Um, our government has left it up to each individual regulating agency to decide when they're going to make the change. Um, and the ATF made that change back in the mid-90s, early 90s, actually. Um, the next one to change is probably going to be the FDA, food and drug. You see all your food is already labeled in grams and milligrams. Um, all your, like your, your bottle of soda or whatever is labeled in ounces and in milliliters. It's becoming more and more popular rather than seeing a 20 ounce bottle to see a one half liter bottle. So it, those changes are coming. Um, just kind of a side note, you'll probably never turn on the television on a Sunday afternoon in the fall and hear an announcer say first down and 9.2 meters to go. There are certain traditional things that will probably never change. So anyway, let's look at our standard units of weight. So our standard units of weight, let's start out with the largest unit that we really use, which is a ton. A ton is generally defined to be 2,000 pounds. Now I say generally because this is actually what is called one short or net ton. When you hear somebody say one ton, 99.99% .99 of the time they are talking 2,000 pounds. We will never use it. Anything we use in this class will be 2,000 pounds. Any tests, any homework, it will be 2,000 pounds in a ton. But just to make you aware, there is something out there called a long or a gross ton. It is 2,240 pounds. The difference is a ton was originally used for buying and selling grain. And you can't put a ton of grain on a scale by itself. It has to be in a container. It's going to fall off the edges. So the container that originally was used to hold about a ton of grain was about 240 pounds. So think of it like your paycheck. Your gross pay is your whole check. Your net pay is what you actually get after they take all the other stuff out. Same thing here. Gross ton was the, the grain with the container. The net ton was after you took the container away, how much grain you actually received. Obviously, smaller than a ton is a pound. The abbreviation for pound is LB. Um, that comes from the Latin word for pound, which is Libra. The reason they did that was back in the day when uh, it would make sense for PD to be used for pound. But in the bookkeeping that they use for buying and selling grain, PD was already the abbreviation for paid. So they didn't want to confuse paid with pounds. So they used the Latin word. Now, actually, it is in the, it's kind of funny in the, the uh, Americanized English language. If enough people make the same mistake often enough over enough years, it becomes acceptable grammar. Um, because enough people have screwed it up, PD is actually an alternative, acceptable alternative abbreviation for pound now. So anyway. Smaller than a pound, we have ounces. Anybody know how many ounces are in a pound? 16 ounces. Perfect. Smaller than an ounce. The abbreviation for ounce, by the way, is OZ. Again, that comes from the Latin word for ounce, which I don't remember right now. But. Smaller than an ounce, we have drams. Drams were one of the original apothecary units for drugs. They might prescribe an eighth ounce of a medication, or, a six, or not eighth ounce, an eighth of a dram of medication, or a sixteenth of a dram of medication. A dram is one sixteenth of an ounce. There's 16 drams in an ounce. Smaller than drams, they had minims and grains. Both of those have been absorbed now into the metric system for medications because for medical purposes, the grain was well, so ingrained, so entrenched into the, the medical use that they actually blended it into the metric system. Not a smooth blend, as we'll see when we talk about it later on. 
Something to point out, by the way, when we talk about pounds, ounces, and drams, this is what we're going to be talking about is 16 drams in an ounce, 16, 16 ounces in a pound, and 2,000 pounds in a ton. But you hear a lot on the news right now, you know, gold is over $2,000 an ounce or whatever. When we're talking about precious metals, we are not using standard pounds and ounces. When we're talking about precious metals, they're using something called troy measurements. Something a lot of people don't realize about the standard measurement system is it was anything but standard. Um, if I'm using my thumb to measure an inch, obviously everybody's thumb is slightly different. At some point, people decided to standardize it. In England, it was King Edward decided that his thumb was going to be the official you know, inch of the land and his hand was going to be the official cup. And so they made containers that held the same amount as his hand and they cut blocks of wood that were the size of his thumb and his foot and everything else. Well, in other countries, there was different rulers that decided my thumb is going to be the official inch. So from one country or at least one region to the next, the standard measurements were slightly different. Troy units come from the island of Troy. Um, that was the central, in the Mediterranean, that was the central uh, location for trading precious metals. So that's where they were standard, kind of standardized their measurement from there. But anyway, in Troy measurements, one troy pound is only point, about 0.83 standard pounds. Now, you don't need to know this. You'll never be tested on it, but I'm just throwing it out there for your information. And one troy pound only contains 12 troy ounces. So a troy pound is actually slightly smaller than a standard pound. A troy ounce is actually slightly larger than a standard ounce. Like I said, again, you're not going to be tested on any of this, but just something to throw out there. When you, you hear about it a lot, especially right now with some things going on with the monetary system, about buy gold, buy silver, you know, it's this price an ounce. It's not the units that you would think of as far as standard sizes. Well, let's look at standard units of volume. So we're going to start out with the gallon. One gallon gets split into, what's the next smaller unit we're going to run into? Quarts. You know how many quarts are in a gallon? Four. The word quart actually comes from quarter gallon. So it's abbreviated as quarts. So there's four of them in a gallon. Smaller than a quart, we have a pint. How many pints are in a quart? Two pints in a quart. Smaller than a pint. Well, we have a cup. A cup used to be referred to as a half pint. Why? And there's two of them. Something I want to point out here before we go too far. The abbreviation for quart is QT and for pint is PT. In some type fonts, they can be very similar, just flipped over mirror images of each other, the P and the Q. Be very careful with them. I see that get mixed up a lot when you're looking at the abbreviations. If you're going too quick, that you, you mix up quart and pint. Um, moving smaller than a cup, one cup contains eight fluid ounces. Now, a fluid ounce does not necessarily weigh an ounce. It is a unit of volume. One fluid ounce is the size of one ounce of water. So if you have a substance that's heavier than water, or more dense than water, I should say, its fluid ounce is going to weigh a little bit more than an ounce. If you have a substance that's slightly less dense than water, like alcohol, a fluid ounce of alcohol is going to weigh a lot less than an ounce. But it's, it's a unit of size, of volume, not of actual weight. In fact, water, the most water now is not exactly one fluid ounce, or one ounce per fluid ounce. I mean, it's actually slightly heavier um, because most water is 
This is distilled water, and most water has minerals in it, so it's slightly more dense than distilled water. Smaller than a fluid ounce, we have <coughs> tablespoons. Anybody know how many tablespoons are in a fluid ounce? Two. There are 16 tablespoons in a cup, two tablespoons in one fluid ounce. Smaller than a tablespoon? Teaspoon. Anybody know how many teaspoons are in a tablespoon? Three. Three. Very good. This is another one to be careful of. The abbreviations for tablespoon and teaspoon, and there are many of them. The most commonly used one now is just a capital T for tablespoon and a small t for teaspoon. I have seen both of them abbreviated. Teaspoon is commonly abbreviated TSP. Tablespoon, though, is also commonly abbreviated TSP, but with a capital T. Um, tablespoon is occasionally abbreviated TBSP, like that. So something to be careful. If it's a capital T, it is always tablespoon. Small t is always teaspoon, unless it has the TBSP in it. Be careful with that because, trust me, um, when you're making chocolate chip cookies and it calls for three teaspoons of salt, three tablespoons of salt does not taste right. Don't ask me why I know that. Now, the next couple of things I'm going to show you, once again, are just for fun, just for your information. But we've all heard about them. They actually are units. Smaller than, uh, smaller than a teaspoon, we have a pinch. There are two pinches in a teaspoon. Smaller than a pinch, we have... A dash. There are three dashes in a pinch. Did I get that right? I think so. And smaller than a dash, there are two smidgens in a dash. I may have mixed up the dash and the pinch there. It's been a long time since I've gone over these. Um, a pinch is literally just sticking your fingers in there and pinching them together, and how much comes out, that's a pinch of seasoning or whatever. A dash is a standard shaker. You, you give it one shake, that's a dash. A smidgen, which I always thought was a little bit kind of disgusting, is you stick your finger in whatever sticks to your finger, you flick that off into what you're cooking, that's a smidgen. So you got with sweaty fingers, I guess those big smidgens. But just again, you don't need to know those, and I may have, I may have mixed up the pinch and the dash. I'm not totally sure anymore. Um, but yeah, they are actual units. I have a friend of mine who's a caterer. She actually has the measuring spoons that are measured out for those. But anyway, so as we keep going, let's take a look at doing some basic conversions with these units then. So let's say we have something that is measured in pounds. It is seven pounds. And I want to know how many ounces that is. Kind of like what we did with our uh, miles per hour, or our speed and our time earlier, we can make this into a fraction. Seven pounds will become seven pounds over one. And I want to change it. I want to get rid of the pounds, and I want to change it into ounces. So over here, I'm going to multiply by another fraction. I'm going to put pounds on bottom so that it will cross cancel out. And I'm changing it into ounces, so I want to have ounces on top, so I'm left with ounces. What's the relationship between pounds and ounces? Well, one pound is 16 ounces, so I fill in those numbers. So this now tells me exactly how to make my conversion. The pounds do cancel out, cross cancel. I have 7 times 16, which is... 112 ounces, 7 times 16 ounces is 112 ounces, 1 times 1 is 1, so 112 over 1, excuse me, is just 112 ounces. I might have 
48 cups and I want to convert them into quarts. Now I don't have a direct relationship between cups and quarts, but I can use this to get there. So my 48 cups, I'm going to put it over one to make it a fraction again. I want to get rid of cups, so cups are going to go on bottom. I'd really like to go straight to quarts, but do I have anything that's a relationship between cups and quarts? No, I don't. So do I have anything that relates cups to something closer to quarts? Pints. One pint is two cups. So now the cups would cross cancel. So all I've done here so far is I've changed the 48 cups into pints. Now I could multiply this out and then go another step, or I can do this all in one big long line. And let's do that. I've changed it from cups to pints, but I don't really want pints. I want quarts. So I'm going to get rid of pints. Pints are on top, so I'm going to put them on bottom. So once again, they will cross cancel. And do I have a relationship from pints to quarts? Yes, I do. One quart is two pints. So now the pints cross cancel, and the unit I'm left with is the quarts. So I have 48 times 1 times 1 quart is 48 quarts. I have 1 times 2 times 2 is 4. So this is now 48 quarts divided by 4 is 12 quarts. So 48 cups is 12 quarts. So I have 128 fluid ounces, and I want to convert that into tablespoons. Make it 128 over 1. Now before I do this conversion, something that I always do, when we talked about your operations with whole numbers and stuff like that, I stressed estimating before we started. The same with unit conversions. The biggest thing, which unit is larger, fluid ounces or tablespoons? Fluid ounces is bigger. So I'm going from a large unit to a small unit. So if the unit is getting smaller, the number has to get larger. Because I'm going from large unit to a small unit, and I'm keeping the same amount. So I have to have more of them. So units getting smaller, the number has to get bigger. So I know that whatever I end up with here is going to be larger than 128. So now in my conversion factor, I have to have fluid ounces on bottom. So they'll cancel out. Do I have a relationship from fluid ounces to tablespoons? Yes, I do. One fluid ounce is two tablespoons. So my fluid ounces will cross cancel. 128 times 2 tablespoons is 256 tablespoons. 1 times 1 is 1. So 256 over 1 is just 256 tablespoons. Um, let's see here. Let's do... Sixty-four drams into ounces. Which unit is bigger, drams or ounces? Ounces. So I'm going from a small unit to a large unit. The number has to get units getting larger. Number gets smaller. So we know right off that whatever we end up here better be smaller than sixty-four. So we start out with sixty-four drams. I make it a fraction by putting it over one. In this fraction, I have to have drams somewhere. Where are they going to go? Um, Bottom, so that they cross cancel out. What's going to go on top? Well, I want to convert to ounces. Do I have a relationship between drams and ounces? Yes. yes, I do. One ounce is 16 drams. So now the drams, the drams will cross cancel out. I have 64 times one ounce is 64 ounces. 
1 times 16 is 16. So 64 ounces divided by 16 is 4 ounces. What, how are we doing so far? I'm going to have you guys try a couple of conversions here. Um, let's deal with... Seven pints, I want you to convert it into fluid ounces. And I'm also going to have you do twenty four ounces into pounds. So let's take a peek. Seven pints, put it over one. Over here will be pints on bottom, fluid ounces on top. One pint is, well, do we have a direct relationship between pints and fluid ounces? No, we don't. So we're going to have to go through a second step. Do we have something that gets us closer from pints to fluid ounces? Cups, right? So pints to cups, or one pint is two cups. So we've gone from pints into cups. But we still need to get from cups to fluid ounces. One cup is eight fluid ounces. Now the cups cancel out. On bottom, one times one times one is just one. So all we really need to do is the top. Seven times two is 14. Times eight is 112 fluid ounces. How many had 112 fluid ounces? Okay, good deal. Down here, 24 ounces into pounds. 24 ounces over 1. Over, uh, ounces are going to go on bottom. Do we have a direct relationship between ounces and pounds? Yes, we do. 1 pound is 16 ounces. Ounces cancel out. 24 times 1 pound is 24 pounds. 1 times 16 is 16, so we have 24 pounds divided by 16 is 1 and a half or 1.5 pounds. Any questions? Good. Well, let's take a look at the metric system. In the metric system, each item that we measure only has one unit. For example, length only has the meter. That's the only unit of length is a meter. Weight, or actually mass, only has a gram. Capacity only has a liter. Only one unit of measure for each item. Now, for things that are a lot smaller, a lot larger, we use metric prefixes. Now, something I want to mention here before we get too far into this. In the standard system, we measure weight. And we measured weight in pounds and ounces and so on. For most of what we do in the medical fields that you're going to be dealing with weight, you're going to be dealing with pounds. In the metric system, we're not used to dealing with weight. We're used to dealing with mass, which is measured in grams or, for people, usually kilograms. Nobody wants to be told they weigh 80,000 grams, right? 80 kilograms just sounds better. But there's a difference between mass and weight. Weight is a measurement of force. Weight is the force of gravity. Um, literally what they're doing is they're saying, if I hang you from something, how much is gravity going to pull on you? And weight is measured by taking a scale, a spring of some sort, that has an indicator on it when it stretches and it points at the scale, and you hang the weight on it, and it's how far it stretches, how far gravity will pull on that weight and stretch that spring. That is how weight is measured. 
Now you can see that if you go from the Earth to the Moon, where there's one, approximately one sixth of the gravity, your weight will change. As you move around the Earth, your weight will change. Gravity at the equator is slightly less than gravity at the North or South Pole. Um, significantly less, actually. Um, it's measurable, very measurable. So you would weigh less at the equator than you would at the North Pole. Mass is a measure of the amount of matter. The amount of particles, in other words, within an object. Mass is measured by a balance. So we take a known mass, or we take whatever it is we're trying to measure, and we put it on one side. Then we take known masses, and we put it on the other side until it balances. And whatever this known mass is that causes it to balance, that is the mass of our object over here. Now you can see with this, if I took this to the moon and tried to measure it, it would still balance. Because even though the amount of the force of gravity on this object changed, the force of gravity on this object changes the same. So your mass is constant. It does not depend on the force of gravity. We do have units of weight in the metric system. Our unit of weight in the metric system is called a Newton. I'll put it over here. How many of you ever heard of a Newton before? Unless you did some yeah, serious physics or physical science, you probably haven't, or very few of you have probably heard of it. A Newton is the metric unit of weight or force. There is a standard unit of mass this is one that almost nobody's ever heard of. It's called the slug. A slug is the standard unit of mass. Again, we don't use it often enough. People aren't familiar with it. For some reason, and I'm really am not sure why, when we're talking about standard units, we tend to focus on the weight and the pounds. And we're talking about metric units, we fo focus on the mass and the kilograms and the grams. Fortunately for us, on Earth, I mean, they said there's a measurable difference in gravity from the equator to the North Pole, but it's not enough that we, we make a big deal about it. If you are in a specific location, the gravity is fairly constant there. So your mass and your weight are relatively closely related. They're proportional. So even though kilograms are technically a mass, when we ask for someone's weight, we tend to report it as kilograms, even though technically that is incorrect it's not a not a weight it is a mass so anyway just wanted to give my little spiel on that quick so in the metric system we have our main units meter grams liter um, a meter is slightly longer than a yard would make life a lot easier if they made the meter the same length of a yard well guess what they did they made the meter the same length as the Swiss yard. The metric system was developed at a conference in Switzerland. Back, anybody know how old the metric system is? It was made in the, developed in the late 1880s, early 1890s. Most people don't realize it's that old. Most people think it was a 1970s or 1960s product. But it's been around for close to 140 years now. The meter was equivalent to the Swiss, the Swiss um, yard. The gram was actually equivalent to the Swiss dram. Hence the, the closeness in name. A gram is approximately the mass of a, a large paper clip. So not a very big weight at all. Technical definition of a gram. One gram is defined to be the mass of one cubic centimeter of water. So one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. A liter um, was not equated to, to anything in the standard system. But one milliliter is one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. So the gram is the mass of one milliliter of water as well. Because a milliliter and a cubic centimeter are the same unit. We'll get into those conversions in a little bit. 
So if we wanted to measure something smaller than our main unit, we use prefixes. Our first prefix we run into is deci. The prefix deci stands for one-tenth. So if meter was abbreviated with an M, gram with a G, and liter with an L, a decimeter was DM, decigram, DG, deciliter, DL. One-tenth of a meter, or one-tenth of a gram, or one-tenth of a liter. A little side note, by the way. Again, you will see me always abbreviate liter with a capital L. Because when I first learned the metric system, I was told you had to use a capital L for liter. Um, the reason for that was, you know, I learned it back in the 1980s. Back then, most of your typewriters and even your computers, didn't, the fonts that they used, a 1 and a small l were nearly identical. In fact, some of your older typewriters, to make a, they didn't even have a 1 key. You just used a small, a lowercase l. Um, not that I'm old enough to know that. I've seen that in historical things, just, just to note. But anyway, um, they didn't want any confusion. Is this 21 or is that 2 liters? So they always taught us to use a capital L. Well, now with modern computer fonts being as diverse as they are, in most fonts, the small L, the lowercase L, and a 1 are distinguishable. So that it is okay to use a lowercase L to abbreviate liters. In fact, our textbook does use a lowercase L. It's just, I'm so used to it, you're almost always going to see me using an uppercase, a capital L. Smaller than deci, we have centi, which is one one hundredth. So a centimeter, or cm, is a hundredth of a meter. Decigram, dm, is a hundredth of a gram. Dm, centigram, c, g, centigram is a hundredth of a gram. And centiliter, cl, is a hundredth of a liter. Smaller yet is milli. Milli is one one thousandth. So a millimeter, mm, is a thousandth of a meter. Milligram, mg, is a thousandth of a gram. Now think about that. So if a gram is about the, the mass of a paper clip, literally one little cubic centimeter of water, a milligram, a thousandth of a gram, is pretty small. So some of your medications, well, many of your medications are measured in milligrams. And of course, milliliter is ml, a thousandth of a liter. After they got below that, they didn't go every 10 anymore. You can see here we went 10, 100, thousandth. They didn't go 10 thousandth or 100 thousandth. They skipped the 10 thousandth and the 100 thousandth and went straight to the 1 million. That abbreviation is micro. Now, the technical Abbreviation for micro is the Greek letter mu. So micrometer would be mu m. Microgram would be mu g. Microliter would be mu l. In the medical fields, me the medical fields are one of the first fields to go to logging every, almost everything into a computer. And if you look at the computer keyboard, there is no mu key. So to keyboard it in, it's, it would be really tedious to have to go to a pull-down menu and select that symbol. So in order to make it more user-friendly in the medical fields, they have started to use MC as the abbreviation for micro. So MCG is a microgram. MCL is a microliter. Smaller than micro, again, we go every thousand instead of every ten. Smaller than micro, there is nano. Nano is a billionth of a meter or a billionth of a gram or a billionth of a liter. Um, you hear a lot of talk about nanotechnology in the last five years or so. All that is is the technology of things that are really, really small. Um, an atom is approximately 10 to 20 nanometers in size. So we're talking about nanotechnology or nanoscience. What they're talking about is things that are about the size of an atom. So they're not talking about taking things and cutting them and, and shaping them that way. They're talking about literally assembling atoms to make stuff. And the rules of physics change drastically when you get down to the size of an atom instead of larger objects. Like friction no longer exists and stuff like that. 
nanometer, would, nano is just abbreviated with an M, so nanometer would be NM, nanogram, NG. Um, a nanogram is small enough that we don't need to worry about it. It's pretty tiny. Uh, micrograms do get used a little bit in our medication. There are some things that are down to the microgram. Going the other way, for units that are larger, we have DECA, D-E-K-A. A DECA meter or decagram is 10. Now since DM was already a use for deciliter or DG for decigram, for DECA they use DA. So DAM is a DECA meter. DAG is a decagram. DAL is a decaliter. So 10 grams or 10 liters. Hecto stands for 100. So HM is a hectogram or 100, or HM is a hectometer or 100 meters. HG is a hectogram or 100 grams. And HL is a hectoliter or 100 liters. And then the one we're more familiar with, kilo is 1,000. Kilometer is a thousand meters. Kilogram is a thousand grams. Kiloliter is a thousand liters. Bigger than kilo, again, they stop going every 10. We went 10, 100,000. They don't do 10,000, 100,000. They jump straight to a million. And a million is mega. Notice I used a capital M because mega meter is with a capital M and then a little m for meter. That's a million meters. Mega gram is a capital M and a little g for a gram. And mega liter, capital M and a little l, or capital M and whatever l we use for liter. Mega meter is not used very often. Um, the distance around the equator of the Earth is about 25,000 kilometers. Um, that make it like 25 megameters. So it's really not practical to use a megameter. Megameters, um, there's mega, giga is the next one up, would be a billion meters. Those are used for basically measuring astronomy, stars and distance to stars and other planets and stuff like that. A megagram is used, but it's technically been renamed. A megagram, being a million grams, has been renamed as a metric ton. Rather than calling it a million grams, we usually refer to it as a thousand kilograms. A megaliter is just really huge. A kiloliter is really huge to the point where it's not terribly useful. Um, a kiloliter is like 260, 270 gallons. That's a lot. So liters are usually, liters and milliliters are the most commonly used me measures for volume and capacity for us. I'm going to pause right there. We're going to take our break. We'll come back and we'll talk about these more at about 1130.